Shocking news. Something strange is happening deep beneath the Colorado River. The Colorado River isn't just any river, it's a 1,450-mile lifeline running through seven U.S. states and into Mexico. It provides water to huge cities like Los Angeles, Phoenix, and Las Vegas. It helps farmers grow food for the nation and powers millions of homes with hydroelectric energy. Without it, the American Southwest couldn't survive as it does today. But as the southwestern United States experiences its worst drought in 1,200 years, scientists are being forced to reconsider what we really know about underground river dynamics. How does water behave beneath the surface? Are there hidden aquifers or ancient tunnels that affect the flow of water? In early 2025, researchers began Project Bedrock, a mission to map what lies beneath the Colorado River. They searched for hidden faults, aquifers and underground reservoirs that might explain the water loss and strange seismic activity in the area. What they found was nothing like they expected. When the first images came back, scientists found a huge network of tunnels stretching for miles under the surface. These weren't tiny cracks, they were massive passageways, likely carved by ancient water flows millions of years ago. But that wasn't the only surprise. The scans showed giant sinkhole caverns where the bedrock had collapsed, some large enough to swallow whole buildings. Even stranger, the rocks in the area weren't the usual riverbed type. Instead, scientists found volcanic ash and deep earth minerals, signs of past volcanic or geothermal activity that no one knew existed there. This raised a serious question. Is the Colorado River sitting above a sleeping geothermal system or an unknown fault line? If so, what could happen if it wakes up? Another big discovery from Project Bedrock is what scientists call the Lost Aquifer. It's a huge underground water reservoir found more than 1,200 feet below the Colorado River. Tests show the water has been sealed underground for over 15,000 years, dating back to the last ice age. This could explain historical anomalies in river flow, including sudden increases and decreases unrelated to seasonal changes or dam operations. But this lost aquifer is not easily accessible, it sits locked inside extremely dense rock. Reaching it would require deep drilling or hydraulic fracturing, methods that come with serious environmental risks. And maybe the biggest question of all, if one ancient aquifer exists, are there more hidden beneath the southwest? The biggest shock from Project Bedrock was the discovery of an unknown fault line running alongside the Colorado River. Scientists call it the Colorado Rift, and it's changing everything we thought we knew about the region's stability. For years experts believed the Colorado Plateau was solid and quiet, unlike quake-prone California or the Rockies. But new satellite data shows small tremors, microquakes along this fault. They're too weak to feel, but they mean pressure is building underground. The fault isn't dead, it's waking up. Even more worrying, the Colorado Rift runs close to the Hoover Dam and major water pipelines serving Las Vegas and Southern California. A strong quake here could cause massive damage. Scientists now think the falling water levels in the river and reservoirs might be part of the problem. For centuries, the weight of all that water pressed down on the land, keeping faults stable. But as the water disappears, the ground is rebounding, shifting, and that may be reactivating the fault. If true, the Colorado River crisis isn't just about drought, it's about the ground itself becoming unstable, a hidden threat we're only beginning to understand. Did you enjoy these discoveries? Don't forget to hit the bell, share it with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. Another surprising discovery from Project Bedrock came from the rock samples themselves. Deep within the fault zone, scientists found fossilized shells, plants and algae buried in layers of rock that were once thought to be from an ancient desert. This means the Colorado Plateau, now dry and rugged, may have once been a giant wetland or inland delta, filled with rivers and lakes millions of years ago. The desert we see today is actually a much newer landscape. Even more shocking, these fossils were buried fast. The evidence shows signs of sudden floods or violent climate shifts, not slow changes over time. The rock layers tell a story of massive rapid events that reshaped the land in an instant. Scientists think these changes could have been caused by powerful earthquakes, volcanic eruptions or sudden shifts in the Earth's crust that drained or flooded entire regions. The big question now is, if such dramatic changes happened before, could they happen again? When scientists from Project Bedrock shared their discoveries with Navajo and Hulapai tribal historians, the response wasn't surprise, it was recognition. For generations indigenous stories have described strange behavior of the Colorado River, water disappearing underground and reappearing miles away, 
rocks that seemed to breathe and rivers that briefly ran backward. For years many dismissed these as legends, but new evidence suggests these stories were real events. The newly found tunnel networks under the river match the tales of vanishing water. Breathing rocks could describe underground chambers filling and emptying with water. Even the stories of backward flow might record moments when quakes or shifts change the river's slope. Scientists now see these oral histories as more than myths. They're ancient records of geological change. Tribal knowledge stretches back thousands of years, far beyond modern science. Researchers are now partnering with tribal communities to combine these stories with geological data, building a deeper understanding of the Colorado River's past and possibly a warning about its future. Not only that, while Project Bedrock focused on studying water and geology, scientists made a shocking side discovery. Near Glen Canyon, their scans found high levels of rare earth minerals buried deep under the Colorado River. These minerals like neodymium and dysprosium are vital for modern technology. They're used in electric car motors, wind turbines, and other clean energy systems. Right now, the U.S. depends heavily on imports, mostly from China. Finding these elements here could give the country a major energy advantage. But excitement quickly turned to concern. Mining these minerals would mean deep drilling into the same layers that hold the ancient aquifer. It could release toxins into the groundwater and weaken the rock structures that support the river. The risk to millions of people who depend on this water is enormous. Scientists believe these minerals came from ancient volcanic activity millions of years ago, long before the river carved the canyons we see today. Magma once carried these elements toward the surface where they settled in rock layers that now lie beneath the riverbed. Now the question is simple but troubling. Should we dig them up? On one hand these materials could power the green energy revolution. On the other, mining them could damage one of the most important rivers on Earth. This discovery reminds us that every environmental solution has trade-offs, and nature's systems are deeply connected in ways we're still learning to understand. During Project Bedrock's deep scans, scientists made another surprise discovery. Gas pockets trapped beneath the lower Colorado River Valley. These chambers contained methane and hydrogen sulfide, signs of ancient hydrothermal activity. Hydrothermal systems form when underground water is heated by the Earth's internal energy, creating hot springs and geysers. The presence of these gases suggests that the Colorado River region once had such features long buried hot springs and vents hidden beneath rock and sediment. Even more intriguing, thermal imaging showed that parts of the subsurface are still warmer than the surrounding rock. It's not hot enough for volcanoes, but it means the system may have gone dormant only a few thousand years ago. This raises both risks and possibilities. If these systems ever reactivate, pressure could build underground causing ground uplift or even ruptures that release toxic gases, a danger to nearby communities and infrastructure. But there's also opportunity. A dormant geothermal field could become a powerful source of clean renewable energy. Geothermal plants like those in Iceland or Nevada use Earth's heat to generate electricity without fossil fuels. The challenge? Tapping it safely. Drilling too deep could destabilize rock layers or contaminate water systems. Still, this discovery shows the Colorado River Basin isn't just water and rock. It's a living system full of hidden heat, gas and energy waiting to be understood. One of Project Bedrock's most troubling findings links ancient geology to today's surface problems. In southern Utah and northern Arizona, scientists mapped millions-year-old fissures in the bedrock and discovered they line up almost exactly with the modern sinkholes appearing in nearby towns and farmlands. These sinkholes aren't small, some are big enough to swallow cars or damage homes, appearing suddenly and without warning. For years no one understood why. Now researchers have the answer. The ancient fissures are reactivating. As drought and overuse drain groundwater, the water that once filled and supported these cracks is disappearing. With nothing holding them up, the rock layers above are collapsing creating massive sinkholes. Even worse, scientists believe these fissures may be draining water directly from the Colorado River. Instead of flowing downstream, part of the river's water is seeping into underground channels, possibly explaining the mysterious water losses that have puzzled experts for years. If this continues, the risks grow. Roads and buildings could collapse, farmland could become unstable, and key infrastructure may need to move away from danger zones. This discovery shows the crisis isn't just about losing water, it's about the land itself changing as that water disappears. The southwest isn't just drying out, it's shifting beneath our feet. One of the most surprising discoveries from Project Bedrock wasn't geological, it was biological. More than 1,000 feet below the Colorado River, scientists found living microorganisms unlike anything known on the surface of Earth. 
These tiny life forms called extremophiles survive in total darkness, crushing pressure and almost no oxygen. Instead of sunlight, they get energy from chemical reactions with minerals in the rock. Some may even feed on ancient organic material that's been trapped underground for millions of years. Genetic tests reveal DNA sequences never seen before, proof that these organisms have evolved unique ways to live and grow in conditions that would kill most other life. This discovery could reshape what we know about life on Earth. These microbes might resemble the first forms of life that existed billions of years ago, long before oxygen or sunlight-based ecosystems. Studying them could help scientists understand how life began, but it goes beyond Earth. If life can survive deep beneath the Colorado River, could it also exist in similar underground environments on Mars or Jupiter's moon Europa? The finding opens a new window into Earth's hidden biosphere, a vast underground world that may hold as much life as the surface. It also raises new questions. As we drill for water or energy, could we be disturbing ecosystems that have been isolated for millions of years? While Project Bedrock studied what's happening beneath the Colorado River, other researchers looked above it, in the mountains where the river begins. A team from the University of Utah discovered that a major cause of the river's declining flow isn't just drought, it's dust. Huge amounts of dust are landing on mountain snowpacks across the Colorado River basin, making the snow darker. Normally clean white snow reflects sunlight and melts slowly through spring, feeding rivers and reservoirs. But when dust covers it, the snow absorbs heat and melts weeks earlier than normal. Early snow melt might sound harmless, but it means less water reaches the river. Warmer early season temperatures cause much of that melt water to evaporate or soak into dry ground before it can flow downstream. Researchers estimate this could reduce river flow by hundreds of thousands of acre feet each year enough to supply a large city. Where does the dust come from? Overgrazed land, unpaved rural roads, dried lake beds and drought-exposed soil all contribute. And here's the dangerous cycle. More drought creates more dust, which speeds up snowmelt, which worsens drought even further. The good news. Scientists say this problem can be fixed. Restoring vegetation, limiting grazing, paving or treating dusty roads and monitoring snowmelt in real time could all help slow the cycle but it will take cooperation across the entire Southwest, because the dust doesn't stop at state lines. A new study published in GSA Today revealed something that stunned even experienced geologists. The eastern slopes of the Colorado Rockies are rising not over millions of years but right now. This real-time tectonic uplift is happening at several millimeters per year, small to the eye but huge in geological terms. Over decades that means inches or even feet of elevation change across the upper Colorado River basin. Scientists say two main forces are driving it. One is post-glacial rebound. After Ice Age glaciers melted, the Earth's crust began springing back from the pressure that once held it down. The other is deep tectonic movement along old fault lines, where minor quakes show the crust is still shifting beneath the Rockies. This uplift is reshaping the land. As the terrain rises, rivers cut deeper, erosion speeds up and landslides become more likely. River channels shift altering water flow and ecosystems. Using GPS and satellite radar, researchers mapped the uplift and found it's uneven. Some areas are rising faster creating new stress points where earthquakes could occur. The implications are serious. Dams, pipelines and bridges built on the assumption of stable ground could face long-term strain. Water systems might need redesigning as riverbeds deepen or move. Experts warn that managing the Colorado River now means more than watching water levels. It means understanding that the ground itself is moving, changing how the entire system works. Scientists are now uncovering a new crisis along the Colorado River, a biological one. Research from the U.S. Geological Survey shows how the river's changing flow is threatening native life, especially the humpback chub. This fish has survived for millions of years in Colorado's fast wild currents, its hump helping it stay steady in turbulent water. But when dams were built, the river changed. Natural floods stopped, the water cooled and slowed, and the chub's habitat collapsed, its numbers plunged to near extinction. To save it, scientists launched a massive tracking project, tagging thousands of fish and even using environmental DNA to trace their movements. They found hidden spawning grounds, the exact water conditions needed for breeding, and the migration routes connecting feeding and nursery areas. But those safe zones are disappearing. Warmer water and weaker flows are wiping out backwaters where young fish once grew. Invasive species like smallmouth bass are now moving into these areas, hunting the chub and taking over its habitat. Armed with new data, scientists are releasing artificial floods from dams to mimic natural spring surges, rebuilding spawning grounds and cooler side channels. 
Restoration crews are planting native vegetation and reshaping riverbanks. Tribal knowledge has been key, revealing ancient spawning sites and helping guide modern recovery. Saving the humpback chub isn't just about one fish, it's about saving the river itself. When the chub thrives, the entire ecosystem begins to heal. One of the most creative ways scientists are trying to heal the Colorado River is through artificial floods. Working with the Bureau of Reclamation, the USGS releases carefully timed surges of water from Glen Canyon Dam to rebuild the Grand Canyon's beaches and sandbars. Before the dam was built in 1963, natural spring floods from snowmelt shaped the canyon every year. These powerful flows carried sand and gravel that created wide sandbars, vital for birds, fish, and even ancient cultural sites. But when the dam stopped those floods, the system began to collapse. Without new sediment, sandbars eroded, habitats vanished, and native species declined. Now scientists are fighting back with high-flow experiments. When rivers like the Paria deliver fresh sediment into the system, dam operators release controlled floods that mimic nature's rhythm. These surges move and redeposit sediment, rebuilding beaches and restoring lost habitats. The 2023 experiment was a major success. Sandbars grew, new pools and backwaters formed, and native wildlife quickly returned. But these efforts come with trade-offs. Every artificial flood means less water for power generation and storage, forcing a delicate balance between ecology and economy. Through the Adaptive Management Program, scientists, tribal leaders and policymakers work together to find common ground. The message is simple. Rivers need movement to stay alive. We can't undo the past, but these managed floods show that even in a controlled system, the Colorado River can still find ways to breathe again. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the strange secrets of the Colorado River, don't forget to leave a like, share this video with others who love uncovering Earth's hidden stories, and subscribe to our channel for more incredible investigations into the mysteries shaping our planet. And remember, turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update when the next discovery surfaces. Thanks for being with us on this great journey. Leave your thoughts in the comments and like to help us. Remember to subscribe for more. See you soon.